Hello and welcome to the Combined Joint Task Force's DCS Refresh Course video series. This lesson will cover the SA-342 Gazelle and is intended to assist you in getting back up to speed if you haven't flown for a while. As with all our refresher courses, this will not be an in-depth tutorial, but rather a fairly fast-paced review of the aircraft systems and procedures. We'll go ahead and begin with the startup procedure by coming down and turning on the battery, alternator, generator, turn on the fuel pump, and click down here to start the stopwatch. At about 20 seconds, we can turn on the starter. While we're waiting for that, we'll turn on the UV lights for the dash, the nav lights, and the anti-collision lights, and turn up its brightness there. Up here on the top, we have the formation lights, as well as the cabin light. You can click at the back, back here to turn it on. Click up here to change the lens color. All right, now that we're past 20 seconds, we can go ahead and click to stop, and then turn on the starter. We're going to be waiting for this green light here on start to go off, which will happen at about 25,000 RPMs. While we're waiting for the long skinny needle to get up there, we can go ahead and turn our rotor brake off here by pushing it forward. Here's our fuel flow lever. We're going to be moving that forward at this next step. I will not be looking up as I have it bound to my HOTAS. All right, we're at 25,000, so we can begin to slowly move that fuel flow lever forward. Note that the needle lags behind a little bit, so don't move it too fast. You want to stop it right about 30,000, and the rotors will begin to spin. Now we're just waiting for the short fat needle to catch up to the long skinny. Once that happens, we will begin to slowly push the fuel flow lever all the way to the fully open position, which will be down here. Just keep in mind that you want to keep the fat needle close to the skinny one so I need to move a little bit slowly to avoid over torquing all right now that we're fully open we'll go ahead and come down here to the navigation system and move it from off to standby it takes about 70 seconds for it to warm up once that's done these lights will go off turn the gyro to the GM position so it can warm up once it's done warming up the flags here will disappear. We used to have to turn on the RWR, but it seems to be starting in the on position now. If it's not, go ahead and turn that on. Go ahead and turn the pitot on, the trim, as well as the magnetic brake. Come over to the radar altimeter and power it, and then set a low altitude date, so it's going to be 50 meters. Come over to the main artificial horizon, left click and hold until it settles itself out. Release, come to the backup, left click, and then use your scroll wheel to enter it out. All right, right now these flags here are because the nav is still aligning. Go ahead and turn on our autopilot by right clicking these four switches. Coming down, go ahead and turn on the radios by right clicking here to go from the off to on position indicated by the green light. Here it's in the off, turn it to the traffic position. Down here it's in the zero off position, right click into the FF. The display will go solid here in a few seconds. We can go ahead and arm our countermeasures by right clicking to either the fast or slow. I also like to open the cover on my countermeasure so I don't have to worry about that later. Our navigation system display has went blank so it is warmed up. We can right click to go to ground. That is the coordinates of our first waypoint. Now our flags up here are gone. That's showing the bearing that we need to fly and the distance to reach our waypoint one. Our RWR is now fully warmed up. The gyro is good to go. So we are set and ready. That's it for the startup procedure. Like to quickly touch on the radios. I'm gonna hop to the co-pilot seat here as it has a bit of a better angle. To change the frequencies up here on the VHF AM radio, you simply just rotate the knobs. Down here on the FM radio, you can't actually click any of these buttons. The only thing you have is the preset channels that you cycle through by left and right clicking that knob. Down here on the UHF radio, you can set custom frequencies. So if I wanted to do two, four, two, zero, 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 and then hit validate, and you now set that frequency. Down here on the ADF radio, which is a bit hard to see, these three different tiered knobs control the frequencies on each side. 
you have two radios set up, then you can turn it on the ADF by clicking this knob. You can hit here to hear the tone of that frequency. And then to switch between the two, you simply click this. So now this radio is off, this one's on, vice versa. Next, I wanted to go over the navigation system. Coming down, the rotary knob is currently on waypoint. You see I have waypoint one selected here and its coordinates. You can choose which waypoint you want to have displayed and be steering to by pressing the number corresponding. As you'll note, waypoint one I have set in the editor. All the other waypoints were not set, so they are defaulted to the aircraft's starting position. So two through nine are all the same. All right, showing back to waypoint one, the rotary knob on position, that is your current position. As you can see, waypoint two, when I rotate it, the coordinates don't change because that's set to be the aircraft starting position. All right, coming over to seat time and heading, that is the heading I will need to fly and the amount of time remaining until I reach the currently selected waypoint. Right now it's nine out because I'm not moving. Down here we had the ground speed and deviation. This will come into play big time whenever you're trying to get into a stable auto hover. When you're using the weapon system, I'll show that when we cover that. Down here we have the magnetic heading and declination, and down here is the wind speed and direction. Coming back to waypoint, to create or edit a waypoint, simply select the waypoint you either want to change. So if I wanted to change waypoint two, and then I would hit enter and then hit delete once, twice, so I could change those digits. Or if I wanted to add an entirely new coordinate, I would simply just remove all of them. Now I will need to hit either two or eight for north or south hemisphere. I know I'm in the north, so I'll go ahead and hit two. You'll see the end has been added and then I'll input the coordinates. So I wanna go ahead and do three, five, 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 one. The one will not be input from the coordinates that I got off the F10, just the first five digits. And then I'll hit the down arrow to move down to the easting. And I'll go ahead and delete all of those out. Again, it removed the E, so I'll need to hit six first to add back in my E. And then if I had three leading digits, I'd go ahead and put those in. But since we're over here in Syria, it's going to be just three, six, two, nine, three. That is going to be my coordinates. I would not put that last digit in and then hit enter. So you'll want to put it in in a five digit format for the northing and then a five digit for the easting if you're in Syria. If you're over somewhere else that has three leading digits, you would put those three. All right, so that coordinate has been input. We can see waypoint one, waypoint two, waypoint three through nine will all be the same. Now, if you're making changes to a waypoint, so let's say I've done that and oh, I changed my mind, just hit and hold delete, wait like two seconds and then release and it will cancel out the changes. Also, you can save with the freeze button down here, your current position. So let's say Waypoint two, I change it to this three, five, 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 five. If I wanted to make that my current position, I would simply just rotate the rotary knob to the position and then hit freeze. It will save these coordinates and then I can simply go back to waypoint and then select my waypoint two, which is already selected and then hit enter. It will now save the coordinates that I froze to this waypoint. So now waypoint two, three, they all match again. This is useful for if you're going out somewhere and you find a nice spot to engage targets, but you have to go RTB to rearm, you can save your current position where you're engaging from, come back to base, rearm, and then simply select that waypoint and fly back to where you were before. Also, when you're in other modes, let's say you're over here in the sea time heading and you want to change waypoint, you can simply hit destination and then one enter and it will change the waypoint without having to go to the waypoint page. Down here on this rotary knob, if you're flying over the ground, of course, keep it selected on ground. If you're going to be flying over the ocean or a large body of water where you're not going to have ground under you for a while, you can go ahead and set it to the C mode. Also, take note that the navigation system does not switch from one waypoint to another automatically as you pass over them. So if you're flying a route, when you hit waypoint one, you will need to manually select waypoint two to continue on to that waypoint. Also up here, as I said earlier, this is the bearing and the range you need to fly to get to the currently selected waypoint. You can also right click over here to move to waypoint and that will give you some steering needles on the artificial horizon that might be a little easier to see when you're flying without having to you know, focus your eyes down on that display. All right, next I wanna go over the autopilot and trim systems. I'll start by taking a look at the controls. So for the trim, you will need the trimmer and trimmer reset. 
For the flight autopilot mode, you will need the altitude mode and the speed mode. For the auto hover, you will need the auto hover toggle as well as the collective toggle and the slaved toggle. The collective toggle will allow you to go up and down while in an auto hover, and the slave toggle will allow you to rotate the aircraft left and right while in an auto hover. Also, the autopilot master switch is useful. If you're flying low and you're near trees or buildings and you need to do some tight turns, you can hit that button, and down here you'll see it disables the autopilot, and then you can re-engage it by hitting the same button. It allows you to have full control over the aircraft, which allows it to be more nimble, but it is far less stable all right i'll go ahead and get in the air let me turn on my control input indicator down here so you can see what i'm doing we'll take a look at the trim and the in-flight autopilot we'll get flying towards our target area over here the trim on this aircraft functions the same as it does in like the huey and everything else so if i'm flying and i hit my trimmer need to remove my inputs immediately because it will multiply them now i'm feet and hands off controls and as you can see it's still holding if I hit the trimmer reset it centers everything back out all right so I'm flying towards my target and I want to use my in-flight autopilot so I'll set it to the altitude hold mode first in order for you to engage it you need to have the vertical velocity indicator down here near zero as it is right now so I can hit my altitude button indicated over here you can see that it's on as well the little switch down here is in the up position now my collective will control my speed so you need to keep an eye on your torque to make sure that you don't over torque the aircraft. Depending on your altitude and how fast you're already going, you can redline it if you're not paying attention. So I'm pushing my collective up. As you can see here, the torque's increasing and so is my speed. Now, if I'm coming up to a building or a hill and I need to go up, or if I'm kind of high and I want to drop my altitude down, I can switch to the speed autopilot mode, which will hold the speed here. And now my collective controls my altitude so i put my feet on the pedal a little bit there to rotate so as you can see i'm reducing the collective and we're losing altitude again you want to keep your eye on your torque over here as you're doing this so as i'm increasing my collective we're picking back up a bit and the speed is maintaining the same so i'll go ahead and bring my collective back down i switch back to the altitude hold mode so now i'm controlling the speed again note that while you're in this mode your pedals do control your aircraft and so does your stick it'll just attempt to hold the altitude or the speed depending which mode you have it in this is useful because if I put my pedals in a little bit I can actually hit my trimmer and it will hold that so my feet are not on the pedals and then if I hit the release it'll center it back out let me go ahead and increase my speed here before I drop down so as I'm flying, you can see that my target now is over here to the front left, indicated by my gauges here. If I use my trim hat and put in left trim, it'll slightly roll the aircraft and it'll bring the nose around. As you can see here, this is where I'm flying. It gets around, you can either central back out the trim manually or you can just hit the trim reset button, which will neutralize all your trim inputs. And it'll put me back flying relatively towards the target. That's how you can use the in-flight autopilot. All right, in order to use the auto hover autopilot, let me zoom in down here. You may want to reference the ground speed deviation page of the nav. Right now I'm going 178. In order to engage the auto hover system, you need to be 18 or below. And your vertical velocity needs to be almost zero. So I'll go ahead and close with the target area over here and I'll cut back to right before I'm going into auto hover. All right, I'm approaching the target now. I want to be roughly around 4,300 meters, which is the range of the hot threes. I'm referencing down here. I'm at 5,000. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start getting ready to get into my auto hover. So I'll go ahead and kick off my autopilot. I want myself roughly in the direction. I want to slow down my speed while trying to maintain roughly my altitude. Now the only problem with the ground speed indicator is you can actually spin and be going backwards and it won't tell you. It has no indication of whether you're going forward or backwards. It just tells you your ground speed. So you kind of have to keep an eye on it, figure out what's going on. So right now I've engaged the auto hover because I was around 12 ground speed and my vertical velocity was near zero. Pointed right at the targets. 
as you can see over here, we're in hover and collective autopilot. So if I hit that collective toggle that I showed in the controls earlier, the collective goes off and now I can push my collective up. And as you can see over here, I'm increasing my altitude. This is useful if you're wanting to pop up from behind a hill or a building or something. And I simply need to drop my collective a little bit till I get near zero again and then re-engage my collective hold. And now I'll just sit here. You will move around within like a 10 by 10 meter area. Just keep that in mind. So don't be really close to something in front of you or directly around you. Keep a good situational awareness of what you got around you. All right, I'm gonna hop over into the co-pilot seat here. And I'll real quickly cover how to use the hot threes as this will also pertain to the slave toggle for the autopilot. I'm gonna turn on my TV here, turn on the power for the system, power for the IR. Rotate the camera around to the manual position, which will rotate it above my head up here to where it's facing forward. Now we can see over here. And go ahead and either zoom in here, turn on the IR. If you want to recenter the camera, you simply have to hit that toggle. Go ahead and move down. The targets are somewhere out here ahead of us, I know. There they are. Go ahead and zoom in here. So over here, you have your laser, which you need to flip the cover up on, and the laser's below that. And then you have the missile fire, so I'll go ahead and flip both covers up. I'm gonna laser designate, so we're at 4,200 meters, which means we're good. Go ahead and rotate my key down here to the day mode, or the night mode, depending on the situation, and then select my weapon station. I'm gonna select station one, which is out here. One, two, three, four. And we got a fault. Let's see what's going on here. Relays. Oh, fault would be my master arm. Can't forget to turn that. So we got a fault. Let's see what's going on here. My off bore. Yeah, that's what it was. So I went ahead and hit that slave toggle for the autopilot, which moved the aircraft over just a little bit. It was off center. And now I have no fault. I have the box down here indicating that I am good to fire, and all I have to do is hit my weapons release. And then I can adjust as needed. And back one. Also, just to demonstrate more of that slave toggle, let me just do out here. So if we turn the camera over, it's going to be pointed off over here to the left somewhere, and then we hit that slave toggle. You notice the aircraft turns to point towards it. Now it is toggled to the camera. If I move the camera back to the right, it will also move the aircraft with it. Disengage that, simply just hit that slave toggle again, and now I'm free moving the camera. In order to fire at another target, you simply need to find it, get it under your crosshairs. Remember to rotate this knob to your next weapon. Make sure all your lights are green. You can laser it to make sure it's still within range, and then rifle. All right, so that covers the use of the Hot 3s and the autopilot systems. All right, next I wanted to cover the weapon systems on the L version. First, you'll note we have a pilot side up here. By clicking it, we can rotate it down. Note that there is nothing showing on it right now. Coming down, we have the armament control panels. They have displaced the radios, which are now here and here. This top panel, by powering it on, powers the system. Over here, we have the rockets remaining. Over here, we have the gun ammo remaining. We can flip up the master arm covers. The left one is for the rockets. Note that the green light is now illuminated, indicating that the rockets are selected. The right side is for the guns. Note that the light has moved to the guns. Whether we switch this off or on, if the gun is on, it takes priority. We have the rocket selected right now. Coming up, we can see that the pilot side is still blank. That is because the master arm for the main system is not on. So by turning it on, we can now see that we have our sight up here. So I'll go ahead and kick off the auto hover and we'll engage with rockets and then switch to guns and engage with guns. 
Gauging is as simple as just lining up and firing. Note that the Gazelle can only carry eight rockets. Go ahead and switch to guns down here. And there you have it. That's the weapon systems on the L version. Alright, we are now in the Mistral version of the Gazelle. The setup for it is very similar. The weapon control panel down here, armament panel, you turn it on. You've got two missiles on each side. You can arm both missiles at the same time. Flip down our pilot sight up here. Turn on our master arm. And now you will hear the tone. heard that loud beep that was the aircraft passing through so when it's got that tone you simply just need to fire your weapon if I can hold steady here for a second splash one that concludes this refresher course covering the SA342 Gazelle hopefully you found this lesson helpful Thank you for your time and attention.